Batman has me in a chokehold. Now that I'm reading this, I can't, I can't unsee it. I can't stop noticing it. How deeply that disturbed me on a visceral level. Hello, welcome to the start of a reading vlog. This video is gonna be a romance reading vlog because I have a new release a somewhat new release and an audiobook and a library romance book that all just kind of like came into my life in the past few days uh, and I want to read them and so I figured I would vlog it because I'm in the mood to vlog. So we're going to start off this video with a little haul because one of the packages is the first book that we're going to read in this video but I'm going to save that for last. I have some boring things from Amazon. Got like a top to my toothbrush to replace the old one because I've been using a travel toothbrush for a month because I've been so lazy and not gotten this. Makeup wipes, again, something that I needed for a while. And I got a like padlock situation for my storage unit at my apartment. And I can't be bothered to remember a code, so I got one that comes with a little set of keys. Last but not least, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, let's get our handy dandy scissors here. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. Okay, so this book literally came out today. It's publishing day for this book. I'm so excited. Um, and so the first book we're going to be reading in this video is Cruel Seduction by Katie Robert. This is the fifth book yeah the fifth book in the dark olympus series by katie robert uh the first book is neon gods um which i'm sure many many of you have heard about um i really really love this series i love katie robert she's a very talented and just like stunning lady and she writes like dark romance um very very spicy romance but i am so excited look at this cover i'm obsessed but this is about Aphrodite, Hephaestus, Pandora, and Adonis. Adonis? Adonis? So I'm definitely starting with this. Like, literally as soon as I'm done finishing recording this clip, I am going to start reading this um, and annotating it. Okay, the other book that I got, I went to Half Price Books this past Friday after work because I had a rough week. And I got a couple things, one of them being Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I don't know why I just felt called to pick this up when I was there. I saw the cover and I was like, you know what? That looks like a fun time. I did see Katie Colson read this um, at Katie Colson and um, the main character has type 1 diabetes and Katie as an individual with type 1 diabetes says that the representation was really good, very authentic um, and like mirrored her own lived experiences. So I'm very interested. And also I read The Love Hypothesis and really liked it. I did not read Ali Hazelwood's second book or like those novellas that she came out with, but I don't know. I figured why not and it was $13 for a really new book. We're also going to be reading this in the video probably. And then last but not least, two of my co-workers have convinced me to read Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton, um, which I have heard very mixed things about. It's a stalker romance. I have never read a stalker romance before and it's apparently very, very dark. Kilua, really? Okay, I, I want to have an opinion on it. I want to know the controversy and two of my coworkers were talking about it and talking it up to me and like wanting to know my opinion on it and this and that. So I was like, yeah, sure. So I got the physical copy out from the library. So I'm probably not going to start this one before I do these two, but this is on my radar for sure. Now I'm going to sit down and enjoy Cruel Seduction. I am so excited for this book. So excited. Um, I will update you when I have things to say, but for now, I'm gonna get to reading. Right, Arista? Boop. Oh my God, did you hear that little sound you made? Boop. Peace out. Hey everybody. I think I last updated you on Tuesday and it's Thursday evening now. Um, I just got home from work a little bit ago. I want to sit down and read some more, but I wanted to update you before I did that. So yeah, I wanted to come on and do a Cruel Seduction update because I have like 100 pages left. Um, I read a huge chunk of this on Tuesday night and a huge chunk of it last night. I'm really enjoying it so far. 
Uh, it's definitely not my favorite in the series, but it's not my least favorite either. And I mean, like, I'm not done yet, so like, I'll have a conclusive ranking of the first five at the end of this video. But um, I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, it's just like a fun, fast time. You know, it takes place in a world that is essentially our own. Like, there's some like other vibes and it obviously has like this like dark romance like lens over top of it where you've got like this fictional city of Olympus where all these corrupt people are in power and there's a lot of like power plays and politics and like power struggles. So yeah, when I come to a Katie Robert novel, I am not expecting, you know, the most complex world building or complex like plot structure like let's call a spade a spade she writes really good smut and that is a skill in and of itself um to write a steamy scene that's not cringy i'm relatively new to romance i've only really started reading romance in the past few years and when i find an author that i really trust to like hit the big and important parts of a romance for me um i really like to stick with them and one of the reasons why i really like Katie Robert as an author and one of the reasons why she's like one of my trusted romance authors um, is that you know she writes really fun and lovable or likable characters not cringy and often very saucy smut scenes and also a commitment to diversity in the novel whether it's having BIPOC characters in your novel or having LGBTQ plus characters or disabled characters, having neurodiversity, plus size representation. I just really value authors that are willing to commit to showing everybody deserves to have a romance, to have a love story, no matter what their circumstances are and things like that. That's another reason why I absolutely love Chloe Lee's. Um, I'm pretty sure that's actually like her tagline on her website is that she believes everybody deserves a romance. and. I really feel like because Chloe Lee and like Katie Robert and Talia Hibbert are like my tried and true like trusted romance authors like I've come to really respect that they bring that kind of novel to the table. They bring- Hey! Stop that! Oh my god I have to break up a cat fight. Literally a cat fight. One second. After they eat they go buck wild. I don't know why. But like as soon as I give them a meal, they just like have to run it off. I don't understand. But anyway, yes, because I feel like I started reading romance that was by queer authors, by neurodiverse authors, by BIPOC authors, I really have come to appreciate and respect that. Uh, Katie Robert is a white author, but they are an openly LGBTQ queer author um, and really commit to having that. Um, for example, in this book, one of our main characters, Adonis, has a non-binary parent and we also have another side character that uses neo-pronouns and I love how organically and naturally that's just like exists in Katie Roberts' world. But then at the same time, but then also their main characters are more often than not, if not all the time, members of the lgbtq plus community we've got bi characters we've got pan characters we've got polyamory representation in a lot of her books including this one um and it's just like i don't know it's it's something that i just really love to have in my romance books because when i go to romance it's to experience the happy and exciting parts of life and romance but i don't want to just see that through one lens all the time i want that lens to shift and change and to you know butt up against other characters and like um for my romance to have been a nuance you know in terms of this book specifically i will say um i think one of the reasons it's not my absolute favorite is that there isn't like one sort of centralized plot it's kind of like almost in terms of like this series, I feel like this is like an interim book between like big events in the world, if that makes sense. Like in the previous novel, the whole premise was like that there was this, this big house party and a lot of like political maneuvering was happening at the house party. And this book is kind of just revolving around everything that happens after that as a consequence to the events that transpire at the end of that house party. 
um so i think that's like my biggest critique is that there isn't like a super clear plot but that being said there's really cute stuff going on with like previous couples in the series i won't say anything because i don't want to spoil it but i don't know i'm just i'm having a fun time and that's what i want i want a fun fast and interesting reading experience and katie robert always delivers hopefully gonna finish this tonight i don't really have anything else going on or anything else to say oh except oh my god um i didn't even plan this as part of the video but since we're doing all of this romance reading tomorrow is august 11th and the amazon prime adaptation of red white and rural blue is gonna be up tomorrow so we're definitely gonna be watching that tomorrow i'm so excited though oh that's like literally one of my favorite romances of all time i own that i have a very heavily annotated copy of it i'm so excited update you once i have finished and have my final thought, evaluation, rating, all of that jazz, but yeah, peace out. Hello all and happy Friday, also known as Red, White, and Royal Blue Day. Nearly called off of work today so that I could watch this movie <laughs> earlier, but I did not. Um, so yeah, I worked and then I went over to my parents, we had some Thai food for dinner and now I am back at the apartment and I'm gonna change out of my work clothes, get into something comfy, bust open a truly, thank you Arista, and after I bust open a truly, I am gonna start this movie. Before I do that, I finished Cruel Seduction last night, and this is the like thing that you use to open the blind, so I'm gonna pull you guys to the side so you don't have to see that but yes i finished cruel seduction last night and i am um, oh i have mixed feelings because the first two thirds of this book were really really good in my opinion um definitely still not my favorite in the series but still really good the last 100 pages though kind of disappointed me a little bit like oh i don't know i feel like truly the biggest issue with this book is that it needed to be a little longer because we have four perspectives so you know we've got four main characters but not only that we have four main characters all of whom are like engaged in this open poly knot so there's just like so much going on in terms of like you know we've got pandora and aphrodite's relationship to build we've got theseus and aphrodite's relationship or hephaestus and aphrodite's relationship We've got Aphrodite and Adonis who have been like on again, off again, and are currently off again, but like, you know, obviously it's a romance, things happen. Um, and then you've got like Theseus and Pandora's friendship to kind of like dive into because we haven't really known them for that long. We've never been in their head before, obviously. And Adonis and Hephaestus like have a relationship. So there's just so many levels and layers to build. And I feel like it was just like, it felt a little bit rushed. It felt a little bit insta-lovey. Not like super insta-love, but like it just like, because of the timeline and the world and all the political things that are going on, I think it was a little rushed in that sense. And also I am sticking with my analysis yesterday that this and the second book, Electric Idol, are the weakest because they have the loosest plot. Really they're just like filler books in this world, in this timeline that Katie Robert has in mind, um, which is kind of, you know, like I get it. Um, it's a 10 book series. Not all of them are gonna have like tons of action and plot stuff going on. I feel like we did not get nearly enough Pandora and Aphrodite together. I, I, I just like, I understand there's a lot of stuff going on with the other characters as well, but not nearly enough Pandora and Aphrodite. It's gonna be a 3.75 ish. So like it's still one of the better books in the series in my opinion. Um, but it's definitely not as good as Wicked Beauty. But there are so many Achilles cameos in this book and that man has me in a chokehold i love achilles the way that katie robert writes achilles is so good also very very excited for the next installment which is karen orpheus and eurydice i think that was gonna be really good so yeah 3.75 my plans for the night are to watch red white and royal blue break it down with you and then i'm gonna like shower um, and I do have to work tomorrow, so I can't stay up too late, but I really want to start Love Theoretically tonight. So hopefully if I get a decent chunk of the way through that, I can also update you on that. But if not, um, at least know that I'm going to start it tonight. Um, and that's going to be the next book that we read in this video. That's the plan. Check in soon. So as a side note, I don't know if anybody else has cats. 
but every single day when I come home, at least one of my bookshelves looks like this because they try to climb behind the books. And so they just like claw them out. Why? Why? I know it's you. I know it's you, Kilua. Why do you do this? Yeah, I'm a little too late for sorry, buddy. Just kidding, I love you. Hello, it's late but i wanted to record my thoughts fresh off the press you know what i mean there's the movie and like it was it was good it was good if you've read the book i recommend it you know like it's a fun time um i'm gonna share some thoughts but there's gonna be a few spoilers not spoilers but like i'm just gonna share my thoughts so if you haven't read the book like i don't know I would skip to the little timestamp that I'm going to put on the screen um, for the end of this conversation. So now's your chance. Biggest issue that I have with it, honestly, is they cut June out. June, who is Alex's sister in the book, they cut her out. I do love who they casted as Nora. I thought she was amazing as Nora. But why did they cut out my girl June? Why? They kept Henry's sister in. Not that I would want them to cut her out either, but like... Why did they do my girl June dirty like that? I thought that the main characters were good. They did a pretty good job of being Alex and Henry. The acting was not superb. It was just like an average good time. And I'm glad that I watched it. Because I decided to read my favorite scenes, I have not yet started Love Theoretically. Um, and it's like 10.30 and I still have to shower. So I don't know if I'm going to actually start it tonight. I am going to take a shower and go to bed. So I will talk to y'all tomorrow. Good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Peace. Hello, good evening all. I, ugh, oh god, that was just in my mouth or stuff. Every time I come in my kitchen, they think they're getting food. I don't, where's the logic, guys? Um, I'm here to make some tea um, and update you guys. So we're gonna fill my incredibly dirty kettle. Wow, don't look at that. Anyway, I'm here to update you on Love Theoretically. I read so much of this over the past few days, I'm about 230 pages in, a little over halfway, and I'm really liking it. Really, really love Elsie, the main character. I feel a little bit called out because I definitely am very similar to Elsie in that, you know, like I kind of am a chameleon and an empath that shapes and like distills certain parts of my personality. The book's pretty funny, I have laughed. Um, out loud quite a few times and you know I really just love seeing women in STEM but also just more generally women in academia because you know I'm not a STEM girly but I do eventually want to go back to school go to grad school um, and pursue a PhD so it's just like I don't know it definitely scratches that itch that I have to go back even though I know I'm not like there yet um, so I do love reading Allie Hazelwood's books for that reason. I would say I have two major pet peeves with Allie Hazelwood's writing. The first one is really just like my personal opinion, my style is I prefer romances that are dual POV. I think that romances are best told when you get the perspective of everybody in the romance, you know, um, everybody who's involved in the relationship. And so I tend to really enjoy and rate romances more highly when they are told from like the dual POV um that was honestly now that I'm reading this my I think my biggest issue with the love hypothesis which is the other Hazelwood that I've read um is that I just I want those two perspectives that's just a me thing I know that that's not everybody um but the thing that does like really like I don't know if any of you have seen How I Met Your Mother um but there's like the one episode where they're like talking about when like you know you've got like the the relationship goggles on and you don't notice when people are doing things that are kind of annoying no worse than you using the word literally in every other sentence well somebody pointed out after i had read the love hypothesis a kind of like annoying quirk 
of Allie Hazelwood's writing and like I'm just like the glass has shattered it's like I'm in that episode of How I Met Your Mother and once you see it once you hear it you can't unsee it you can't unhear it and that is just her constant description of the male protagonists as like large like big larger than life like she compares him to an actual mountain but it happens a lot and I think it was Jesse um, at Jesse on YouTube, formerly Bowties and Books, who first pointed it out when they read Love Hypothesis a while ago. Um, and that was after I had read the Love Hypothesis, but now that I'm reading this, I can't, I can't unsee it. I can't stop noticing it, and it is frequent. So like, but other than that, I am enjoying myself, and I'm loving um, having a main character who has diabetes in that representation. I feel like I'm just learning a lot about the day-to-day -day experiences of someone with diabetes. I'm gonna continue reading this. Um, right now after I make my cup of tea. So I've got my mug here and now I'm gonna move you guys and show you my tea drawers and we'll pick out a tea. So this is my tea drawer situation. This top drawer is all of my like single serve packaged teas. Um, I have a random assortment that I have from Sips by Boxes in this bag um, and then I put some in here also. I've got like plain Lipton, I've got my Lady Grey, things of that nature. And then down here is all of my loose teas. I'm not really sure what I'm in the mood for. Definitely something that doesn't have a lot of caffeine. Let me like root around and see what we can find. lovely friends it has been a few days since i last updated you it is now thursday i don't know if that means anything to you um but i have lots of reading updates so first and foremost i got two free books today um from the free bookshelf at work For those of you who don't know i work in a library we have free bookshelves at the library that are kind of like little free libraries within our library where people can donate books that they have purchased and like no longer want we also put like books that we're withdrawing on there um and things like that so I am always stocking those shelves like a mad person and it paid off because today I got this gorgeous copy of the book of the month edition of people we meet on vacation. I have not read this yet. I have read Beach Read and Book Lovers. Haven't read Happy Place yet or this one so I'm so excited that I got this really nice lightly used copy. Uh, I won't be reading this in this video but I do want to read it um sometime soon so that's pretty cool i also saw and grabbed this paperback co copy of katherine j chen's joan which i think is like a joan of arc retelling it's on my tbr so i figured that i would grab it um so now that i can have a physical copy for my physical tbr so yeah excited about that now updates i don't think i've talked to you since i finished love theoretically but i did and i really really love this um, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Just like, as I said in my last clip where I talked about this video, like, my biggest complaint is that it's not dual perspective, um, and like the weird gargantuan man situation. But other than that, it was really well written. I connected very much with Elsie, um, just like emotionally, and I think that really increased my enjoyment of the book a lot. Um, the steamy scenes were good. Ellie Hazelwood definitely does a great job of portraying, like, the difficulties of being like a woman in STEM um, and simply just like the difficulties of living when you are in grad school and how terrible the pay is and things like that and I'm sure I don't even know the half of it so um, I do really love that you get like the good and the bad sides of academia and like the difficulties the challenges that people face um, in the academia sphere so yeah really liked it and because I liked it so much I grabbed um the library copy of love on the brain which is her second novel i never read this one i did read the love hypothesis and i really liked it um so i started this i'm only on like chapter two and this one is like a another sort of like rivals to lovers kind of situation my other update is that i have started 
Haunting Avaline. I am like a hundred pages into this one and I was under the impression that I was going to be able to like binge read this book but this is intense. I don't know why I didn't think that because it has literally so many content warnings and I mean the author does list them in a very detailed note at the beginning of the book um but not even just like in like the sense like I mean this is a stalker romance which I've never read before so I mean it's it's dark and crazy in that sense but also like the the side plot or the other plot um is super super dark and if I'm not really vibing with it by the time I get to like 30 40 percent I might just DNF it I don't know I really wanted to have thoughts for this video for you guys and I really wanted to get like a good chunk of the way through I was talking to my coworker about this the one of my coworkers who recommended that I read this and she was like you kind of have to go into it assuming that this book exists in its own world with its own logic because it is not realistic um so she was like you have to kind of just like be able to let that go and not overanalyze it and not go into like the problematic nature of the book um which I thought I would be able to do but the jury's still out we'll see I don't know if I'll finish either of these but this is what we've got going on right now two vastly different works um I'm just gonna read a little bit and then go to bed because I do have to work tomorrow in the meantime good night sleep tight don't let the bed bugs bite Hello my lovely friends, it's Friday. I know that I told you last night I was gonna read Love on the Brain, but I don't know. Um, I changed my mind last minute and picked up more of Haunting Adeline and I am a lot farther than I was. I'm on page 247. And I still am not sure that I have coherent thoughts about this, but we're, we're gonna try and string something together. I can't tell if I'm liking this book or if I really am not liking it. Um, there are certain scenes that are well written and then there's other scenes where I'm just not vibing. First of all, it's way too long. Um, but the reason that it's way too long is this book is kind of like three books shoved into one book. On the one hand, you've got like the romance subplot, which like this is a stalker romance. This is a very dark romance. It is not for the faint of heart. And I understand like what my coworker was saying, like this does not operate in the logic of relationships in our world. I think that if you view like the romance part of this book as like operating as like a scene, so to speak, and like we as the reader don't really see outside of the scope of the scene. So we don't necessarily know like the terms that have been negotiated between the two parties involved. Um, that makes me feel a little better. The second plot line that we've got going on is our main character, Addie, or one of our main characters, is living in this, like, mansion that she's inherited from her great-grandmother, and she's trying to solve the unsolved cold case of her great-grandmother's murder. And, like, this isn't a spoiler, she finds this, like, really early on in the book, but she finds some of her grandma's diaries in the book because she has recently moved into this house because her grandma has died. And so she's trying to find out who murdered her grandma and her grandma also fell in love with her stalker or a stalker and so that is interesting like because you can't really tell like is she going crazy or is there a paranormal element going on are there really ghosts or is she just tripping out because terrified by all of these things that are going on that subplot is less interesting but it's still you can see how it's connected to the work. Then the third element of the book is the part that I think is really pissing me off and the part that I'm really not jiving with are male love interests. We actually haven't even gotten his name yet, I don't think, at this point in the book. His friend just calls him Z. He is a, like, vigilante, basically hunts people involved in human tra trafficking and kills them and then, like, rescues and frees the victims of human trafficking, which, like, at face value, yes, noble effort. He's a vigilante, he's just like doing his thing, he's killing people, but he's killing bad people, so it's like, okay. Something that is really bothering me and annoying me is just like the use of like human trafficking for shock value. Again, I'm not even halfway through the book yet, so maybe it does, but it has nothing to do with the rest of the book. And even if it does, cut it all out, edit it all out, and then turn this into a reasonably sized book, um, and it might be pretty good. Using the torture and abuse and assault of children to like make your bad guy, villain, anti-hero look kind of like a good guy 
it's just stupid and also like it's like those parts of the book are not well written like it feels like I'm reading like a teenager's idea of what like a vigilante would do to like take down this like secret government cult I don't know maybe I'm being too harsh but those are my thoughts so far if you know you know and maybe I don't know I I, I don't know that's that's the end of this clip I have no more coherent thoughts I'll talk to you soon <laughs> hello it is time for me to film my last like update of this video so it is currently like midnight and i just finished this and i have other updates for you um as far as reading so i figured you know why not give you an unhinged midnight update so i not only did i read the entirety of this even though i didn't think i was going to i also listened to the entire audiobook for love on the brain this weekend while i was cleaning my house so let's start with love on the brain let's uh start with an easy one <laughs> i loved love on the brain i thought it was so cute really adorable ally hazelwood's really funny and she writes really like good tension and like romantic relationships um i will say that in love on the brain we still get the typical ali hazelwood describing the male love interest as just like gigantic tall but it's not as bad as it was in love theoretically that or i just didn't notice it as much because i was listening to it instead of reading it physically but i really loved b and levi the two main characters and their relationship i thought it was really fun i think i gave it like a 4.5 out of five stars so it's like still a very highly rated book for me even though it isn't like i said dual pov now for the fun part i can't rate this book i don't know how i would go about rating this book i skimmed the last 100 pages of this because i just wanted it to be over i predicted both of the plot twists i knew who killed her grandmother probably at the 200 page mark i was like kind of patting myself on the back for guessing but at the same time i was like it's not because i'm smart you know um it's because it's obvious that's not a shot at anybody else who didn't see it coming but it's just like kind of a shot at the author which is mean i'm sorry i don't want to be mean because like you know someone wrote this book took a lot of their time out of their days and wrote this book and published this book and you know good for her and good for everybody who rated this five stars or who really liked it. Good for my co-workers who read it and really liked it. Um, it's not the worst thing I've ever read. I also knew probably from like the third chapter, I knew what the cliffhanger was going to be. Because in the author's note at the beginning, um, she says this book ends on a cliffhanger. And just like knowing the premise of the book, after you figure out like what the main character like what the main male love interest does and you figure out the situation you know what's gonna happen and then it happens i was kind of hoping it was gonna be something else and then it wasn't you are a fan of really dark romance and you don't have any or you have very few trigger warnings you want to read some raunchy crazy smut this book is for you I don't know why people are recommending this like everywhere on book talk i just went through and read some of the reviews of this book and like all of them make sense but i'm like yeah the reason that there are so many one-star reviews like roasting this book is because of the hype it gets i think is that like a lot of people who probably don't want to read it and shouldn't be reading it are reading it and then like rating it poorly this is not a nuanced discussion or a deep analysis i cannot give this book a rating not because i'm like oh i would give it a five stars and i'm embarrassed to say like no it's not good um the writing i'm not a fan of it doesn't really work for me for the most part i'm gonna stop talking about this book now because i feel like i'm just like digging myself into a hole. I am gonna come at you with a coherent outro during the daytime. Over and out, Captain, okay? It is time for me to finally wrap up this video. It's been like almost a month, I feel like, since I recorded the majority of this footage. It's now September. I went on vacation, got back from vacation, I was sick, um, and now I finally finished editing all of the footage and realized that I never recorded an outro. So yeah, basically my final thoughts on Haunting Adeline after sitting with it 
for a few weeks are very much the same. Um, in fact, I've actually talked to a couple people about it since then, and I really think, like, my standard reaction is, you know, Smut was pretty good, if not unhinged, but, like, it's a dark stalker romance. Arista, why? She's playing with this right now, by the way, which is what you're hearing. Sorry. Grandma side plot, believable to a certain extent, kind of interesting, kind of saw it coming. Everything else, unnecessary, should have been edited out. So those are my thoughts. The other thing that I never said to you guys that I don't even know if I want to say out loud, one of my greatest pet peeves with this book is that the author used in a spicy scene author used the word creamy not once not twice but three times in this book i don't even have words for how deeply that disturbed me on a visceral level why so unnecessary arista you are driving me crazy right now but that word just in that context absolutely skeeves me out. I was like, no, ma'am, stop it. And then she proceeded to do it again and again. So gross, don't like it. But anyway, the reason that I really wanted to film an outro for this video is I had a lot of fun doing this and I want to do a, like a part two probably in November because I do have a lot of spooky reads that I want to vlog and also just a lot of spooky things to read for the rest of September and for October. I know what I want to read but I also want recommendations for books. Specifically authors that I have on my radar. I really want to read Farrah Roshan. I can't remember the first title in that series. I think it's The Dating Playbook but I'm not 100% sure of the order. I want to read or finish Kiss Quotient series. I have to read The Bride Test and The Heart Principle. Um, I've just read the first one in that series. I really want to read those. There's this one book. I can't remember the author's name off the top of my head. I think it's called Bear With Me Now though and I noticed that Chloe Lise, who is my favorite romance author of all time, she blurbed that book and I've never seen a book, a romance book that she's blurbed before. So definitely gonna do that. But please leave me your recommendations down below. I don't really care, you know, dark romance, contemporary romance, you know, fantasy romance. Just leave your recommendations down below for stuff that you either want to see me read or that you enjoyed and that you think that I might like. Um, I really can't emphasize enough that I am very much newer to the romance genre. I've only be been reading romance for like a year, a year and a half, and even then I don't exclusively read romance. Thank you so much for sticking around, for watching this video. It means the world to me. I love you all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if that's your jam, and I hope to see you in my next video. Happy reading, happy writing, and happy living. Peace out.